As you know, we had our Alda system replaced. Well, when they replaced it, they didn't replace the flow. The previous owners, I'm pretty sure they didn't ever release that air cushion. And I figured this tank over that time was probably compromised also. So sure enough. <laughs> The flow tank started leaking now. Luckily, I got a hold of Truma and they're having this Hershey RV show and the timing just worked out that they had a tech here, first day of the show, and uh, they sent him over. They sent the parts with him and uh, he's here and he's gonna replace the tank. God bless us, everyone. I think what it is is it's a secondary of this. And so what it's doing is it's still taking the same hot glycol, there's an aluminum uh, uh -huh. It's taking hot glycol, it's been heated, passing it through here and allowing more water to circulate around. What it's allowing is enough water for it to be heated at the rate it can be used. So the goal with the flow is to give you unlimited hot water because there's so much of it that can be heated that mm -hmm. by the time you get the hot water, it's already heated more behind it. So that's the goal with, with this. It can actually be removed from the system. It yeah. doesn't need to be used at all, but then you're limited to about six gallons of hot water, and it doesn't heat quite six, but when it pushes it, it's I think it's around six. So you've just got your, your water in and out and your glycol in and out, right? So your glycol's coming in and out and your water's coming in and out. So your water's coming in cold and coming out hot, and you've got that little drain valve for your air gap that you've been adjusting. So it's, this part is really, really simple. So these pliers are just to pinch liquid lines, coolant, hose, fuel, whatever. So what we're going to try and do is pinch lines that I can get easy access to, and then once I get it removed, we can empty the fluid mm -hmm. th that's in it without making a mess. Because of how we have to right. disconnect it, it, it will allow air in. But hopefully you feel that there's a, a better grasp of what we're doing today. When the original owners had this, and I told you that I was worried that they probably never released that air cushion, which probably compromised that tank. It might have been expanded so much. And they always kept it there, so they didn't right. disconnect, connect, disconnect. Here's what I'm wondering. So when we disconnect and we're going from campground to campground, I've been shutting the old system off, which is allowing that to cool, which it never probably did before. And I'm wondering if that cooling the and then heating was contracting the opposition like from how it been set for so and long. made that i'm wondering if it's better just to for this all the system to leave it running on propane while we're traveling we so, have two gas stop devices on it which i mean i helps. wouldn't recommend running it unless you're using it. It, it it's i mean the reason we design it is to be efficient the way that it is Mm -hmm. and so it's supposed to come online pretty quick and then shut off and cool correctly. The seam weld that's on this tank is where they're cracking and it does happen from the pressure that builds and as well as the contraction. So I mean they're, yeah. as they do both, it's just splitting the weld. I used to use these when I worked in a hydraulic shop for aircraft and yeah. they are awesome. And the wife and four kids and a Great Dane and we also had a hairless cat. <laughs> Look what you did to Mr. Bigglesworth! We all lived together in Arizona in 5,000 degree heat <laughs> in our, our big RV. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It, it led to some experiences that kind of brought me and my wife closer together. Yeah. We uh, learned how to be the opposite to each other. My wife does all the backing up. She backed up our 41 foot fifth wheel really? with our 22 foot long truck. And uh, she learned that I was a better talker and she was a better doer. So we actually had discussed that recently. Yeah. So putting her in the truck and me in the in the back was a far better way to get the job done. Because one, I knew what could be ran over. Right, I might even run that over, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I'll fix the truck later if it's not a problem, right? <laughs> so there was some of that that she could just feel paranoid about that I didn't. Uh -huh. And then just her ability to interpret me was so much better than my ability to interpret her. And so uh -huh. it helped greatly to to kind of just 
again, the way I've always said it is, you know, take your negatives and fuel your positives. Don't fight the negative, use it. And the negative was, I can't talk to her, but she's great at listening to me. So <laughs> just get in the truck and let's get this done. Uh -huh. And it works great. And as that's happened and progressed, we've learned how to better communicate with each other, which builds our parenting ability. I mean, our dog listens to us better, <laughs> right? So I'm a math brain and, and she's a God brain. And I think with my stomach and she thinks with her heart, you know? And so it's like learning that that's how I have to talk to her and her learning that that's how she has to listen. And then me doing the same backwards. It's like, oh, she's talking from here and I'm talking from here, but we're both using here and I use this side, she uses this side. And so it's just like a combination of these things and now we can get everything we want. We just have to figure it out what we want. Yeah. yeah. And then life gets a little easier, right? <laughs> well, so when we first started, we were in a 41 foot fifth wheel. We were oh, in a Keystone, yeah. Montana. Beautiful trailer, very heavy. Yeah. I had to buy a new truck. And then I learned that my, my resources were a little bit different than my desires. And it was hard to full time when you had, you know, a 2000 a month overhead. And so that, because I didn't want to work that hard, right? The goal for me was to be in the woods. And so we adjusted fire. We moved to a smaller trailer that cost a little bit less and did a little bit more. It was able to be out in the woods longer, had a bigger water tank, I had a fuel tank for my toys, you know, for the four wheelers. So we didn't have to go back for gas, more space and everything. And then again, it just evolved into, again, a bigger desire for more and more experiences. and. The more experiences you have, the harder the search is, and so the, the more durable the vehicle needs to be, and the yeah. further we were getting off grid, the, the more we realized that these big trailers were just rattling so much that they were falling apart, and it's not their fault. You know, they weren't built for washboard desert roads. Right. You know, that I'm camping in so I can go four-wheeling yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. You know, the Coke ovens out in the middle of Arizona, you know. Yeah, so exactly. places like that just require a different a different model and so we kind of learned to buy what worked for us not what everybody else wanted that's we say that all the time people ask for opinion you know it works for us for our lifestyle because we work full-time and then we're gone on the weekends this is our vehicle like right you said earlier to get where right. we want to go do our work and go enjoy life and that's kind of the key to everything is building your life to include the things that you want, right? Don't mm -hmm. fight what you want, find a way to make it work. And once you do, you find the balance between fueling your negatives, right? Yeah. Using your negatives to fuel your positives, you end up with just such a, an understanding of how to get what you want that you just don't, the basics of everything are so simple, you just don't need the opinions all the time. It's more like, oh, well, what works for this? And then you just find people who are like you yeah. And you can model some of the things you do after them, but you still have to evaluate the differences. You know, the big the big diesel pushers, my brother-in-law has one, and he took it up to the same place. So we spent all last summer and part of the beginning of fall this year on a homestead in Montana on top of a mountain, 5,000 feet, the Sapphire Mountains right across uh, from where they filmed the TV show Yellowstone. Oh, yeah. We could see them filming from our show. mountain, right? In the background really? of their mountain... In the background of their filming on that river, the Bitterroot, um, my wife's family were the first people to have power on that side of the mountain because they dammed that river. And so when they film those scenes, you can see them from the mountain and the old part of the homestead that used to be owned by the family that is no longer. But we're on the other side of the river still and we can just yeah. watch them from the mountain. It's funny to see what people can do even with the different resources, right? So we had what I felt was a good way to get up there and get around and they showed up in their big diesel pusher class a and they made it up too it just takes a lot longer you got to worry about what it's going to cost you to get up that hill because it's time and then eventually damage if you're really not meant to be there yeah. and for them it was mostly time um, they ended up having to do 40 point turns and shoveling dirt so they can get the back ends to clear because departure angles aren't great you know yeah, on a yeah. big diesel pusher you don't have a lot of ground clearance but they just kept scraping and pushed the tires off the ground and you couldn't go no more. Oh, so you end up having to like dig a hole so that your bumper can drop or, you know, you know, build, build up a berm. So yeah. the idea of a retirement is the biggest misconception with the capitalist thing, right? Is mm -hmm. if it doesn't cycle, it can't exist. And you can't just work and then quit. 
No, you, you have to find a way to support your life, right? If you're right. not supported through all of it, then you fail. And so if you can't do what you love while you do what you don't, then you're never going to do anything, right? And then so what a lot of people I see that are retired is why this fueled this kind of life for me is my parents are pretty well off. My wife's parents are pretty well off. And both of them are doing nothing now, right? And it's like, well, you work to retirement, and that's not what I want to do. I don't want to just be done once I have enough money to not do. I want to just keep doing until I no longer can, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so everyone's like, well, I do what I hate so that I can do what I love. And it's like, well, you're not supposed to do them at different parts in your life. They should be combined at all parts of your life. Because if you don't learn it now, how are you going to know it then? Mm -hmm. Like you can't just flip that switch at 65 and say, oh, I'm ready to do nothing. You're going to lose your mind just sitting in your house all alone with no purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Follow what fuels you yeah. and let that be the seed you plant in your world and then just start picking the fruits, you know, and just tend the tree. It's that yeah. easy, you know? Yeah. It's just a skewed perception, I think, at this time in, in our civilization, I guess. We're all looking for answers. <laughs> Trying to find the biggest rubber line that will be the easiest to clamp. Just so you guys know, I did ask him to make sure it was okay to ask him <laughs> questions because if I'm doing something, working on something, somebody's watching over me, I always mess up. So I always ask to be sure. The key is to mess up. You want to break it until you learn how to fix yeah. it. I've just broken enough things to know how. Now we're disconnecting the water lines because we are done draining. Your wife's still not ready to go back out full time yet? Um, She's feeling it um, because she feels how heavy I feel it. Yeah. And I think it's it's the... It's kind of weird, right? So when I pull really, really hard for it, she has to pull really, really far. And she can see that I'm kind of slowing down because it's just like, if this is the life you want, then I need to match you. And she knows that that kind of kills the fire, right? Yeah. And so she starts to have to take up the torch, right? And so now she's fueling it. That's why we have two Suburbans. Because <laughs> she wanted me to fix the other one, and I started trying to find parts and it was easier just to buy a whole nother one and so I ended up buying one that worked instead of one that was broke and yeah <laughs> then it was well what am I gonna drive while you fix it I was like I don't know we can find you a little beater and she's like how about a little RV right so now she's fueling where I left off which sparks it all again for me but we're just we're at a very a weird place in our balance where we've learned how to just kind of give and take pretty well so this is the circuit board that actually uh, controls your second pump here because with the flow, we had dual pumps. Okay. So you'll have two dials that are exactly the same pump. We'll get nice and cleaned up underneath. All right, this is a good sign. So what we're checking for when we take things apart that are rubber on aluminum is the breakdown of the aluminum. You can start to see a collection of deposits as the glycol breaks down as well as the atmosphere interacts with okay. the stuff. So yours are looking great. That's Your tubes cute. are looking great too. The hoses aren't. Uh, cracked or bulging. That was kind of disturbing, wasn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm trying to position these to where if they touch something, it won't be anything with water in it. Yeah, that's good. Not going to be. In aviation, they always tell you to put electrical lines over the water lines because electricity doesn't leak, doesn't drip. Right? <laughs> All right, so get your lines routed for a little bit less stress and vibration against each other, mm -hmm. which there's still going to be some, but we do have a pretty good route now. I pulled this water line out from where it was vibrating against everything so it can it can move without touching things too much. I'm going to shove this back through your drain hole. <gasps> what? Reclamp that for you. Um, this one I rerouted so it was a little bit less in the way too. And it'll just be tucked right over here. Mm -hmm. This is just a bleed line, right? Your auto bleeder. It's kind of a perfect example of <clears throat> some of these RV manufacturers when they get in a hurry and they really don't think through a lot of this they're just trying to do their job and throw the stuff together a lot of it is adaptation right <laughs> they, you know the the RV manufacturer designed a certain philosophy that worked in the beginning and then it has to grow into something else if it wants to keep living and a lot of that is yes the how they produce these things <laughs> but they're learning yeah. it's not all about speed and it's not all about size. Oh. I think the market you will start to see have more of a variety and less 
of a market ownership of one or another because they're going to be more built for the people who use them and so everyone's going to have their own thing right like you can mm -hmm. even see now we've got guys doing overlander truck campers we've got guys doing resto vintage campers we've got teardrops we've got airstream coming back we've got the big diesel pushers still they never really left but there's a bigger market now for the b vans and i think it's just those voids being filled and it's learning again how to accomplish the task in a manner that's going to offer sustainability to their industry and i think a big thing for them is not building what people want and sometimes that's just durability. It doesn't need to be complicated. Just mm -hmm. I need it to survive the dirt road it's about to go down, right? And that's where you pick what, what's good for what you're going to do with it. This is my next big vision, though, is to share what I love with other people. So what I plan on doing is I want to buy some property, which my family has a few different places with property, so I might not actually have to buy it. But... I want to set it up to where there's um, fruits and vegetables that grow on the property and then they're all divided by campsites that are run by solar with a lake in the middle. Oh, that's and so cool. it's, you have your own separate area, maybe a third of an acre for each camper and it's like you can stay here literally for free, just help tend yeah. the things that make this usable for all of us. Because that's kind of the idea and then I'll just do service and people will come, share the love and then go find the next adventure. What do you need fixed? That's yeah. how I make the money that pays for other things that I like, but this is really what I like, so let's just do both. Mm -hmm. This is how I can communicate with people well, is by fixing that stuff. If I can bring them to me through another avenue that I enjoy, which is camping, then I just think it'll it'll bring together a pretty good world for me. <laughs> it might not be for everybody, and I know yeah. that people are like, you're nuts. If no one's told you yet, you're a genius and an artist. We're routing this now, too, because I'm silly like that, and if it's not the way I want it, I'll just think about it all night tonight when I get home. Mm. I gotta go call those people and go back. <laughs> yep, looking good. Get some paper towels. We do have a little bit of residual glycol. So now we turn the water back on, make sure there's no leaks. We want to get the glycol back in the system. So there was a little bit of glycol. It's just, it's normal. That's, you're going to lose a little bit of glycol when you take those lines off. Um, you got them pinched and everything, but you still are going to lose some. So right now we're filling this tank and uh, then we're going to turn the system on and let that system run through and uh, that glycol should go down filling in those gaps from that air and then we're going to start bleeding the lines. Here you go. Oh. She's on top of it. I got the flow bolted, the all day unit bolted, put a couple of uh, rub inhibitors if you want to call it that on a few rub friction points where it just kind of was routed a little bit. Uh, unpreferable. Yeah. We got some good clearance for your wires. They're not pinched on anything or under anything. So we tuck right. this out away from the hot part. So I'm ready to put the couch on if you want. Appreciate you doing all that extra. I'm glad we got it, man. <laughs> we got our showers back. Woo! We can take showers again. Thank God we stink. We came here to Hershey and all of a sudden we noticed we had a leak, had water on the floor. Well, it was just the flow tank. The one thing that Truma did not replace when we were there <laughs> last time. So I know it seems I mean, you've had a lot of problems with that. We've heard that before, but we really haven't. The issue is, is that when we purchased this first night, it didn't work. It was just one of those things, fluke. It could just, anything mm -hmm. could happen at any time. You just never know. So we've had that problem for a long time and here we are going a few months having this issue because we didn't have an Airstream dealership that we could go to mm -hmm. for one that had all the parts in case we needed to have it replaced. They they weren't going to go ahead and ship a new unit there. They were going to try to diagnose it and we're not going to go there and be without a home mm -hmm. and let them go through these days if not weeks of diagnosing it and then say oh we need this part and order it. How long is it going to take to get it? And then another issue was some of the places that we were calling, they couldn't get us in till way oh, yeah. ahead, of, you nice. know, way out. And some of them I talked to, they never had a, a technician that's worked on these Alda systems before. So we purposely were waiting until we could get to Truma. That way we had Truma, the <laughs> people that should know what they're doing. And two, they had all the parts that we needed, no matter what it was. So that's why we did that. And it, again, it was just an issue that we had from day one. Since they had it fixed, it's been great. Yeah. I mean, we, we've loved it since then. Would we get this system again? No. And the reason why is not because of the trouble we had before. 
there's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. We would probably go with something like an AquaGo. Um, people don't have much problems with those at all. But this is a nice system. You know, the heating, mm -hmm. it's really strange that all of a sudden it starts getting warm in here because you don't hear anything. Now, you know, the one thing that they didn't, uh, they didn't replace when we had the system replaced at Truman was that flow tank. I had a feeling, and I'd asked them if they were going to replace that also at the time, and they, they didn't because the previous owners that had this, remember, they used this as a home to live in, so it sat still while they were building their new home because they had a house that had caught fire. So we're pretty sure that uh, the previous owners didn't relieve the air cushion um, every few days like you're supposed to with these. They need to really do something different with this system because you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't mm -hmm. have to take the panel off and release that every few days. That's kind of a pain. Um, so that's another reason why we wouldn't buy the all the system. Now that this flow tank started to leak, and you know that's the other part of the puzzle that they didn't get fixed last time, and so now we shouldn't have any more issues for a long, long time. So there you have it. That's that's the whole deal with the Alda system, and we were very fortunate to have actually oh, it no. leaked at the best time. Right. It leaked one week before the Hershey show. I called Truma. No questions asked. They sent all the parts with one of their technicians to be here mm -hmm. at the Hershey RV show and had him come to us good technician and very knowledgeable and uh, we were very happy yeah. and he went above mm -hmm. and beyond totally. wanting <laughs> to fix you know other things that has to yeah. do with the system and the bench and everything we're very very, very happy yeah and now we're going to try to go to the RV show still it's after four o'clock glad to miss part of the show to get this fixed so we have our showers. <laughs> yes. When we needed hot water, we would this electric kettle comes in really, really handy. For washing dishes and stuff. And then, of course, we really use nice. the, the campground showers, obviously. Right. But, um, but we're back to normal again. Yay! Well, this is. We're never normal. You know we that. We aren't. We, okay, we're going to go. Let's call it a day. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.